I want you to be happy with what you want. Half! Give me half, Eddie! I think the dopest experience for me growing up was being the youngest child, and that's by years. And the biggest perk to that was that I was able to hang out with my big brother and my big sister, and that let me see a lot of things that weren't, um, I would say, age appropriate. You feel me? I remember going to my brother's room, and on the floor, I see a, a CD with a big star on it, and it ended up being the Hot Boys Guerrilla Warfare. I snuck away and went to go play that shit and that shit was some of the best things I ever heard in my life at only eight years old. <laughs> I remember being at the chilling and practice with my big sister and the girls being on the bleachers and stuff with their skirts and my little lad sneaking under the, under the bleachers so I could look up and see a bunch of their skirts. I was a little perv. I was a little perv, man. <laughs> but I experienced so many dope things at a very young age, dog. But one of the toughest things was when my big brother and my sister went away from college and I was just by myself. But I would always look forward to when my brother came home because he'll always bring new dope things that he's seen and bring them home to me, you feel me? So that would be different music, that would be different TV shows, and that would be different movies. Now one day, my brother brought home Eddie Murphy Raw. He, he had his homies. He come home with his homies and everything like that. They come from Blockbuster. They about to pop in Eddie Murphy Raw. Yep, I just mentioned Blockbuster, man. That was the shit back in the days. You go there, you rent your movies. <laughs> you rent your VHS movies. You bring it to the crib. And then you sit there, pop that thing in, and you watch it. And I'm like, why are you about to watch Eddie Murphy stand-up comedy? Like, what the hell is this? At a point in time, all I knew was Eddie Murphy from Nutty Professor. You know, the, the family guy, Dr. Doolittle, the good guy, Eddie Murphy. I didn't know Eddie Murphy. I didn't know Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy. I didn't know Eddie Murphy raw. So my brother puts in the movie and the opening scene comes up and it's a little boy telling jokes. And he tells this crazy ass joke about him shitting on everybody's head. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they got a little boy telling the joke. I'm a little boy, shit. He talking crazy too. I'm tuned in, you feel me? So this shit start, Eddie Murphy come out with his tight ass blue leather suit on. I'm like, I ain't never seen Eddie Murphy like this. Who is this guy? And he begins telling jokes. And he begins saying things that blew my fucking mind. I was so glued to that screen. That stand-up comedy is timeless. And with things that's going on today, every single thing that he said still relates. Eddie Murphy, it's like he saw this shit coming. Anytime I thought about rich people getting divorced in my future, I always thought about Eddie Murphy's sketch about half. You feel me? The woman getting half. Eddie Murphy details being so afraid to go ahead and deal with modern women on the West. Modern Western women that he has to go ahead and get him an African chick that don't know anything about Western civilization when it comes to marriage. How women can go ahead and take half your money when they fed up and ready to go. That he got to go get him a bus bitch from Africa. Big bone in her nose and a big plate lip and a big fucked up afro. Eddie broke that shit down so dope. <laughs> he said he gonna go to Africa, find him his bus, bitch. I'm gonna walk up to him and say, hey, how you doing? You money? She go, I will, I will, I will. I say, Miss Murphy, Miss Murphy. And I'm bringing her home. Y'all think it's a joke? Y'all gonna go past a newsstand one day and see me on the cover of Jet with some woman with a big bone and a plate and a big fucked up afro, butt naked. And y'all gonna say, hey, Eddie must be visiting Africa. I'll say, Murphy marries bush, bitch. I'm gonna be like, The only thing that could ever mess that shit up, if it's a chick from America that gets into on Fun Fool's ear and spoil her rotten with all the modern bullshit. It will catch up by herself in the kitchen and throw a monkey wrench in your whole program. Dude, who you think he is? You, you ain't no god, you a human being. You ain't supposed to treat nobody. This house is too big for one person to be cleaned up. Why don't you leave? You, you always cry. Why don't you just leave a nigga? Oh, you know some girl. Do you know you can take half his money? Did you know you can take half his money? Did you know that? And lo and behold, that shit happened. Chick got into Oom Fool Fool's ear. And now Oom Fool Fool is asking Eddie for half. I want half Eddie. Eddie. I want half Eddie. Eddie. I want to talk to you. I don't care, Eddie. I'm an American woman now. I want what's coming to me. Well, I want you to be happy with what you want. Half. Give me half, Eddie. Now to remind you once again, I'm watching this at like 11, 12 years old. I'm experiencing this shit and I'm like, what the fuck? This is so dope. Shit, this is crazy. And as I take in so much content in today's age, it never fails me. It never fails me. Eddie Murphy Raw is one of the most relevant, most timeless stand-up comedies ever. And it hits 
to this day. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this shit tonight just to vibe. But it hits to to this day. As far as the relevant topic, as far as relationships, and how things are going, and so many different things within in the dynamics between men and women. You know, it could always, always go back to that half shit and that own full full shit. And Eddie Murphy definitely needs to go for this run right here, man. All this content that's coming out today, it ain't fucking with shit Eddie Murphy did, bro. In the comment section below, let me know what you guys' favorite stand-up comedy years.